doubt, doubt or, believe. or believe. The story, the story that, that spreads, spreads around, the, around world. the world. Hello, I'm Julia. Do you all think there are underground people or underground kingdoms? I think you all know about the existence of the underground people that Edward Snowden exposed. He's a former bureau member of the US National Security Agency and the Central Intelligence Agency. While he was working for the NSA and the CIA, he was disappointed by the vicious behavior of the US government. For example, they deliberately got a Swiss banker drunk and arrested him for drunk driving. Then they offered him a deal and used him for spying and so on. Isn't it scary to suddenly be forced to take part in espionage activities? Edward Snowden turned against the government. And he exposed a lot of top secret information, including wiretapping activities that were being carried out by the US government. Later, he defected to Russia when he feared for his life. He has an incredible sense of justice, doesn't he? Today he is still in exile. And some of the information he revealed included the existence of underground people. He says there are underground spaces inside the Earth, inhabited by creatures called subterraneans, who are far more intelligent than humans. He also revealed that UFOs do not fly from outer space, but are flown by subterraneans. It seems that the underground people use UFOs to get in and out of the underground. And he says there are big holes at the North and South Poles, which are doorways to the depths of the Earth. It is said that the president at the time was furious that he revealed this information about these doorways. He then tried to use state power to prevent Edward Snowden from getting asylum. Then, in 2017, a giant hole was found in Antarctica. It is said that this giant hole is not a natural hole, but clearly man-made. There are many rumors about this giant hole. The first rumor is that it is a UFO base built by Nazi Germany. Hitler believed there were underground people and was looking for a way in, and it is said that he built a secret base in Antarctica to develop UFOs. The second rumor is that they are archaeological sites. It is said that Antarctica was not extremely cold in the past and that there may have been a time when people could live there. The third is said to be an entrance to the underground, where underground people live. Ruins usually have damaged structures, but this hole seems to have remained in a clean form. It is said that the hole is still being investigated using robots, but I wonder what is actually going on. Incidentally, photos of structures and other objects taken in the past have been censored and deleted. Story of, Story a, father of a father and son, and son who met an underground, underground man. man. In April 1892, Norwegian fisherman Jansen and his son were fishing as usual. However, the weather suddenly changed and they almost died in a storm. After a while, the storm stopped and Olaf, the sun, thought he had been saved, looked up at the sky and saw the sea in the sky. The father and son thought they had gone to the other side, but they had entered an underground kingdom. Olaf said he saw a red sun even brighter under the ground than on earth. Then, while Jansen and his son were wandering, an underground man about five meters long came to their rescue in a boat. The subterranean man then invited Jansen and his son to the country where he lived. The subterranean kingdom was lined with golden buildings and had abundant crops. They stayed in the underground for two years. After two years, the father and son left the underground entrance and returned to their original world. However, they found themselves in the opposite Antarctic Ocean. On the way back, they were caught in a storm again and only their son Olaf was able to return to Norway. On his return to Norway, he told them about subterraneans, but they all suspected him of being psychotic and did not believe his story. Later, in 1908, the American author Willis George Emerson heard stories of underground people from Oahu, and wrote them down in a book called Smoky Gods or A Voyage Journey to the Inner Earth, which was also considered a fairy tale by the public. However, an American naval officer, Richard Byrd, had a similar experience to that of Jansen and his son in the Arctic. Richard Byrd was the first person to reach the North Pole by plane on May 9, 1926. And in 1929 he was the first person to fly over the South Pole from Little America Station on the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica. This polar mission was the result of planning and preparation by Lt. Col. Byrd, and was made possible by the private funds of Edsel Ford. John D. Rockefeller, Vincent Astor, and others. 
and he was also one of the members of Freemasonry, including Federal Lodge No. 1 in Washington, D.C. and Antarctic Lodge No. 777, established under the New Zealand Constitution. On his return to the United States from the Arctic, Byrd became a national hero. Congress passed a special act on December 21, 1926, elevating him to the rank of Commander-in-Chief, and in 1927 he was awarded a medal by President Calvin Coolidge at the White House. In 1946, U.S. Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal appointed Richard Byrd to command the Antarctic Development Project. This was Byrd's fourth Antarctic expedition, codenamed Operation High Jump, and his largest to date. Then, in 1955-56, Byrd was appointed head of the U.S. Navy's Operation Deep Throat No Deep Freeze, which established permanent Antarctic bases at McMurdo Sound, the Bay of Wales, and the South Pole. This was Byrd's last trip to Antarctica. Byrd then passed away permanently at his home in Boston on March 11, 1957, at the age of 68, due to heart disease, and was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Decades after Byrd's death, his son discovered his diary. In the diary, Byrd wrote that he had had a strange experience inside Antarctica during Operation High Jump in 1947. February 19, 1947. 6 a.m., everything was ready and I took off with the communications officer. At 7.30 a.m. checked communications with base camp. All is normal. 9.10 a.m. extensive snow and ice landscape, with a slight yellow, red or purple tinge under the ice. 9.15 a.m. a mountain-like object can be seen in the distance. 9.55 a.m. there are mountains and green valleys where there should be snow and ice and the navigational instruments are spinning. 10.05 a.m. as we lose altitude and look at land, we see a huge animal. It looks like an elephant, but no, that is a mammoth. 10.30 a.m. the temperature outside is now 74 degrees Fahrenheit and the navigational instruments seem to be back to normal, but communication with base camp is also lost. 11.30 a.m. we see what looks like a town. This is impossible. The aircraft has become light. I can't control the aircraft. What is this? A flying object shaped like a disc and marked with a swastika is suddenly approaching. This is fantastic. Where is this place and what's going on? An English voice with a Scandinavian or German-like accent is heard from the communicator. Rear Admiral, welcome to our territory. We will land you in exactly seven minutes, so please relax. After the message, the aircraft comes to a complete stop, as if it is being manipulated by some external force. At 11.40, I can see that the plane is landing. It feels like you are in some kind of invisible lift. At 11.45, several people approach the aircraft. They are tall, blonde-haired and do not appear to be carrying any kind of weapons. My name is called and I am instructed to open the aircraft. From this point on, there is no record of time and the story is spelled out to the extent of Bird's memory. We were put on a small platform-like vehicle with no wheels and began to move towards the glowing city. The city seems to be made of crystal. We stopped in front of a large building and were offered a hot drink that tasted like nothing we had ever had before. It was extremely tasty. We then proceeded to the back of the building and were taken to someone called the master. The room was surrounded by beautiful colors and beautiful beings. It is a sight that cannot be described in human terms. There was a long table in front of which a man was sitting. And he began to speak thus. Welcome to our realm. We invite you in because you are a wonderful person and well known on the surface of the earth. This is Ariane, the inner world of the earth. Rest assured, we promise to send you safely back to your world. There is a reason why we invited you here. We are interested in you because you guys dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We have never interfered in your wars before. But you have acquired a power that man should not handle, the power of nuclear energy. We have already delivered messages to the powers in your world, but they did not heed our warnings. On the contrary, some of them even fired on us with hostility and malice. There are those among you who would rather protect power than the survival of the world. 
The Second World War is only a prelude to what you will experience in the future. The master then tells Bird to return to the surface with a message for humanity. If humanity does not change its ways, all cultures will be destroyed and chaotic times will come, but I believe that some of your race will live through the storm. When that time arrives, we shall come forward again to help revive your culture and your race. Perhaps, by then, you will have learned the futility of war and its strife. The conversation ended here. Bird was returned to his plane, pushed up to an altitude of 2,700 feet by invisible forces, and at 2.15 am was back in the mountains of ice and snow. Communications with base camp had returned and they were relieved to be in touch. In 1947, on March 11, Bird was called to the Pentagon to report everything he had experienced that day. This is reported to then-President Harry S. Truman, who holds him there for 6 hours and 40 minutes. After his report, Bird swore that he would never speak about his strange experiences in Antarctica again. What do you think of these strange experiences? There are legends of a paradise kingdom in Tibet called Shambhala, and the Roman scholar Pliny the Elder wrote in his Natural History that after the fall of Atlantis, people who fled underground became subterranean people. In fact, many scientists, authorities, and explorers have searched for subterranean cities, so it is possible that they have already been found. If you have any comments, please leave a message. And please like and subscribe my channel, it makes me happy and gives me energy to make the next video. Thank you for watching.